So we're moving on to mum. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so uh, Gora Priya, it's so nice that you are also offering. So you you said that you originally met, I think, met Srila Gurudev or met the devotees in uh, 1969, so very early on. But then you went to a love feast in 1977, moved into the temple in 87, but met Srila Gurudev in 96, took Harinam in 97 and Diksha in 98. Um, you might want to correct me. Well, no, I, I, I did not move to into the temple in 87. I moved into the uh, ISKCON Los Angeles temple in uh, late <clears throat> 1978 after associating with devotees for uh, a year or so. Oh, okay. So you Just remind me uh, what happened in 69, because you're only 10 years old. In oh, okay, right? yes. <laughs> so while well, you asked me, when was the first time I met devotees and I was 10 years old yeah. and um, they were on the street performing oh, right. their time. Yeah, yeah. And so I was given a Bhagavad Gita and some spiritual sky incense at the time. And right. so that was, I, I didn't even know they were Hare Krishnas. I just thought, who are these strange looking people? Yeah. And my mother was trying to drag me away, you know, and I said, no, 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 I'll catch up with you. And I just kept watching them. And then finally I got the courage to ask them who they were and where they were from. So that's my first ever meeting devotees. Was your mom a bit worried about you speaking to them? Um, yeah, I think she was being protective, but yeah. you know, I said, I'll catch up with you. Right. <laughs> so so I remember we, were we, were, walking. we were on Sankatan recently and um, we were near a restaurant and there was this cute little boy and he was with his folks and uh, he was eating and then we were doing our maha mantra and he was clapping and he was so into it and i could tell the parents are like oh, okay um this is a bit awkward but it was some, sometimes <laughs> at that age you just are so receptive right or um, curious very yeah, curious <laughs> exactly. you know, so did he please um offer your push punch i'm excited to hear okay Amagyana Timidendasya, Pananjana Shalakaya, Chakshu Rumilitanguna, Kazma Shri Guruvana, Nama Om Vishnu Pataya, Radhikaya Priyapane, Shri Shri Mad Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Tinam, Ranchaka Vachu Vischa, Kipa Sindhu Vyavacha, Patita Nam Pavane Vya, Vaishnavi Vya Nama Nama. I wanted to, first of all, um, offer my unlimited gratitude to Shamarani Didi and Vrindavan Velasini Didi and also Vasanti Didi. Um, I've known Shamarani Didi since I was about 17 years old. And um, it was because of Shamarani Didi that I met Srila Gurudev um, and her, um, persistence of always encouraging me um, in my Krishna consciousness. Um, I think that it's important to mention that because throughout the years of my life as a devotee, um, she has always been um, available and always willing to um, give me her association. And um, so what I wanted to start with because um, I'm a little nervous, so you'll have to be patient with me. Um, what I wanted to start with was um, my actual, you know, um, life as a devotee beginning in the Iskapan Ashram in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, I had a lot of really wonderful association in those days right before Srila Prabhupada left the planet. And um, I became very closely connected with some very, um, beautiful, beautiful disciples, senior women in the ISKCON society. And um, anyway, um, just from their sharing with me, their memories and, or their love for Srila Prabhupada, I had a deep wanting or desire to also have Srila Prabhupada as my spiritual master. 
And of course that wasn't to be, but I was always praying to Srila Prabhupada, oh please Srila Prabhupada, if you can't be my spiritual master, then I want a spiritual master just like you. And that was from the very beginning of my association with his movement, his, his mission. And so um, through the years, you know, I always prayed to Srila Prabhupada time and time again about that very desire of mine, offering that him that prayer. Um, so um, I don't want to get caught up in a whole lot of details about how that progressed. But anyway, so um, in 1986, 87, um, that was a time when I always consider myself a, a zonal acharya era devotee. And uh, those of us who have been around for a long time know what I'm talking about. So there was a lot of changes happening in ISKCON society um, throughout the 80s. And so I considered myself a casualty of that era of um, devotee. And so what happened was... Um, I came to Boise, um, I left Los Angeles um, to start a preaching center with some friends who were also disciples of Rameshwar, who was my ISKCON guru. And um, we started a preaching center. And, um, you know, everything was really sweet and fun and, you know, going along. And, you know, gradually, 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 you know, it just became, in my mind, um, that something was missing. And what was missing for me was having a spiritual master like Srila Prabhupada. And so I remember at one point in time, my children were young at the time and I was very frustrated. Um, and I remember crying to Srila Prabhupada and saying, okay, um, if I don't have a spiritual master like you by the time, if, in 1996 for your hundredth centennial that was my prayer to him on your hundredth birthday you have to give me the spiritual master or, or i can't do this anymore this is not working <laughs> you know it's like yeah i was you know in the bhakti machine doing all this seva and preaching and distributing books all these things but i just didn't have that sense of um a belonging, a connection that I felt that I really needed to have. And so anyway, um, I was invited by a group of Prabhupada disciples, ladies, to go to Vrindavan for Srila uh, Prabhupada's uh, 100th centennial celebration. It was a big deal in Vrindavan they were having. And so I arranged that I was going. Anyway, in June, of 1996, maybe it was in May, before Gurudev came, I got a call from Shamarani and she told me to come to Houston and because Srila Gurudev was coming to the West and she wanted me to meet Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And this was, you know, of course, um, I said, well, are you going to be traveling throughout America or just in Houston? And she said, no, we're traveling throughout so I said I would come to meet him in Eugene, Oregon. I did not know much of what was really happening as far as um, who he was. I mean, I knew he was a god brother uh, or a disciple of Srila Prabhupada's god brother. And so anyway, I came to Eugene to meet Gurudev. And mostly I was coming just to reconnect with Shamarani and Vrindavan Velasini and some other devotees who were there. Um, and so I came and I was very um, overwhelmed emotionally and um, it was very difficult for me um, to put everything together and, um, and really, I don't know, I, I wasn't even in touch with the fact that this was Srila Prabhupada bringing me and giving me what I had asked for. I was not in touch with that at that moment. But anyway, I was feeling very um, fallen. I wasn't really um, chanting, you know, or I mean, I was a devotee, but I just felt very weak and withered up and, you know, 
not ready. And um, Shamarani was saying, you must meet him, you must meet him. Anyway, um, Rindav and Velasini insisted that I come and have a private darshan with Gurudev and I was so scared. I felt I was wasting his time that this wasn't, you know, um, I wasn't qualified. I shouldn't, you know, uh, I was insincere. So many uh, things that were coming up for me. And anyway, so she brought us in to see him. My daughter and myself were there, my older daughter. And I looked at Guru Dave and we offered our obeisances and I sat, we sat down on the floor and he was behind a table and he was looking at me and I felt his, him just permeating my entire, like scanning all of the karmas, all of the births. I just felt like this is a very powerful devotee. And um, I started crying immediately he asked me my name and then I started crying and I couldn't stop crying. And all I said to him was, I have nothing to give you. And he said, I only want your heart and I can help you. And um, it was a very rushed meeting because it was right before he was leaving to go to the airport. And um, I was just overwhelmed. Anyway, after that experience, um, I was driving Shamarani to the airport because she was also flying with him to his next destination. And she uh, missed her flight <laughs> because, uh, you know, talking to me and encouraging me for so, you know, she just completely forgot that she had to board a plane and missed her flight. And so this was in June and in 1990, uh, let's see, in October was Prabhupada's centennial in 96. So. Of course, I went to India and traveled throughout India and ended up in Vrindavan. And she had asked me to find them that, to do the Parikram. And so when I came to Rup Sanatan Bodhiyamat, nobody knew where they were and uh, the devotees. And I was actually um, very um, introspective about, you know, uh, my situation and and where to go from there. And so I was praying to Srila Prabhupada um, every day at the Radha Damodar temple in his rooms and also sitting in front of Rup Rupa Goswami, Srila Rupa Goswami's Samadhi and praying um, daily, you know, for some guidance. And one evening Ramesh showed up at the MBT and he started shouting at my uh, fellow travelers who were Prabhupada disciples that he wanted to take them to see Narayan Maharaj. And they were not interested in going to see Srila Gurudev. And I was with them and staying with them in their room. And I, and I said to him, I want to go see Srila Narayan Maharaj. So he took me and another few people um, to go out to um, Nandagan and, and see Gurudev at Terakadamba. And so, um, what I'm saying here is that there's this internal process um, that happens within myself uh, that I notice that when I'm in this deep prayer or deep um, confusion about uh, what direction I need to be going in my bhakti, um, I find that Srila Prabhupada and Gurudev have always um, pulled me along even though I'm not so sincere that they have pulled me along. So here I was praying to Prabhupada and Srila Rupa Goswami and they brought me to Gurudev at Tir Kadamba, which is the Bhaja Kutir of Srila Rupa Goswami. And I was deeply um, moved by being able to um, meet him there and hear his Hari Kata there. And then, then the party came back to the Rupsanata and Gaudiamatha and I was able to hear from Gurudev every morning and I was um, very much observing what was going on uh, there. So, um, so anyhow, um, you know, as time went on, I did receive initiation from Gurudev in 97 and um, that also um, was important for me because, um, mostly because I was so concerned about my children's futures as devotees. And I wanted them to also have his 
shelter. And um, so that was a very wonderful time for me that we were all initiated. Um, moving forward now, I wanted to just share about um, when Gurudev came to Boise and how that happened. Um, so I was here preaching for a long time and um, there was um, this woman, Indian lady who lived here and she used to come to our temple and she would always tell me how she had prayed to Radha and Krishna for so long that we would there would be a temple in Boise because she was a devotee and there was no temples here. And so her name was Mrs. Sahani. So um, after meeting Gurudev and being traveling with him a lot and being able to see him, I was always asking him if he would please come to Boise. And um, Rajanath would say, well, maybe. And over and over again, I was asking. And finally, um, Gurudev said, I am coming to Boise. And um, this was in La Jolla, California, during one of his programs there. And um, it was just this, I was just so overjoyed. And the reason was that I wanted the devotees, uh, the people here that I had been preaching to for 10 years, um, to have the opportunity to meet a pure devotee of Krishna, of, you know, and I thought that this would be really wonderful for all of these people. So, um, Anyway, he came to Boise and um, it was a very busy time for me. I was, um, you know, pretty much single-handedly trying to make everything, you know, happen. And so um, what, one of the things that happened was I was so busy, I didn't have time to go and see Gurudev. He was giving darshan every morning and all of the devotees were there and going to see him and I was hearing all about it, but I never had the time to go. So one evening after class, Vrindadidi chastised me and said, when are you coming to see Gurudev? And I said, oh, I will come tomorrow. I'm really going to try. I'm going to come. And so um, I went up to the place where Gurudev was staying. And I came in the room and Gurudev threw up his hands and he was so happy to see me. And he said, oh, I am coming to your house tomorrow. And I said, Jai Gurudev, thank you so much. And um, and I had, you know, some association with him at that point. And so leaving the house, I was driving down the road and this Indian woman that I mentioned to you who had prayed for our temple was stranded on the road. Her car had broken down and she had um, arranged to meet Gurudev and have a darshan with him. And she saw me on the road and she was hysterical and she wanted to see Gurudev. And so I drove her back up to the house where he was so that she could have her darshan with Gurudev and then I left. And um, anyhow, so what happened was um, after Gurudev, when he came to my home, I spoke to him and I was expressing how, you know, I always wanted um, to serve his devotees because I felt that I could never really directly serve him and I wasn't directly serving him because I, you know, lived away from devotees in this small little town in Boise, Idaho. And so he um, came to my home and when he spoke to me and I shared this with him, he said, oh, it is for humble devotees like you that I have come. And he was very sweet and he said a lot of things to me about being strong and not being weak. And so anyhow, um, long story short, um, Mrs. Sahani, this Indian lady that he had, he, who had come to see Gurudev, she, after Gurudev left, she ended up um, passing away. Quite suddenly, she died, and it was unexpected. And um, and I realized um, at that, I realized how Gurudev came for her. Um, there was something about her and my acquaintance with her and knowing her, um, that I realized that um, Gurudev came for her because she was leaving. And so she got this mercy from Gurudev and I feel so um, always moved by that, knowing that, that that was one of the reasons why he came here. 
Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was I always felt like when we got initiated, we drove away from Oakland back to Boise and it just didn't feel right that, oh, now I have Shula Gurudev, this pure devotee as my guru and I'm driving away from him and I'm going back to a life of working and raising my kids and, you know, it just didn't seem right. And I thought, how will he ever remember me? You know, so every, every time I saw Gurudev, I would always say, Oh, Gurudev, I'm, I'm Gora Priya, your disciple from Boise, Idaho, because I always thought he would not remember me, but he always did. And um, sometimes he would tease me. And one time he raised his hands and he said, I know Gora Priya from Boise, Idaho. <laughs> and, he, and, um, and it was just, you know, very sweet and loving and caring and, um, the other thing was that um, I felt, I've always felt that I had this very internal relationship with Guru Dave. And um, one time when I was with him, I asked him, um, I said, sometimes I hear you talking to me, is that my imagination? And he said, no, if it is favorable, it is real. And um, so throughout the years and now, since becoming his disciple and, and being with Gurudev, um, he, I feel that he is always with me. And um, it's very uh, meaningful to me to, to, to experience that, you know, he's always there. Um, whenever I'm praying or, or thinking of things or doing things, he's, he, he, he has not forgotten me. And I, I had always thought that he might forget me and he never has. And another, I'll just share one more story is that um, I decided to, you know, give my house a name, um, name it as an ashram. And so um, I decided to name it Ramana Kunj. And I had my daughter paint this sign and we put it out in the front door. And um, within about a week, I got a call from Vasanti Didi. And she said, um, I'm going to be doing some preaching in nearby Boise. Can I come and stay with you? And I said, sure. And um, so I always felt that, you know, Gurudev, he, he wanted to keep sending his devotees um, here because he wanted to give me some service and always have some connection with him to also again show me that he had not forgotten me. So one of the really cool things about Vasanti's program here that she does, um, she has this, everybody knows she does this prison outreach, outreach program all across the country. And so in Boise or in, I, in, in Oregon, which is close by to me, this one prison decided that they would allow her to bring prashadam to the prisoners, which in no other prison that she ever goes to is she allowed to bring prashadam into the prison system. No way, she says they will not allow it. But for some reason, this prison allow, allows it. And she of course wanted to know if I would do the prashadam for her programs. And so I started cooking for the prisoners every time she comes. She has this special Janmastami program for them and we make this huge feast. And again, this is Srila Gurudev saying that um, he has given me this service to do for this, these prisoners. And I always thought that was significant because nowhere else is she allowed to bring prashada. <laughs> and so I thought that again was Gurudev um, telling me I have not forgotten you um, and um, you'll always be um, close to me. Um, so I want to thank you Prabhu for including us in this program that you're having for Gurudev's um, glorification for his centennial. It means a lot to be included and also to be remembered as one of his uh, part of his uh, family. I, I, I'm very nervous. I'm not saying half the things I thought I would, but um, thank you so much.
<laughs> well, if you, Diddy, it was beautiful. And if you want to say anything else, as I make a few comments, please, please feel free to do so, because uh, it was really, really beautiful. And uh, very, I really went on that journey with you. Um, I've got a whole raft of notes here from what you've talked about. And I hope maybe this program is another example of Guru Dave not forgetting about you, because uh, you wouldn't be on the, you wouldn't be in this memories program if Guru Dave did forget about you. And I don't think he's ever going to, so that's not going to happen. But what I'm very interested in knowing, I've got a feeling that your prashadam, uh, you're a modest person, so you wouldn't say it, but I've got a feeling your prashadam is pretty good. So, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> are you, do you bake? Well, I do have a prashadam catering business. Ah, um, and I was I also, I, um, <laughs> I was trained in ISKCON by the ladies who used to cook for Srila Prabhupada. And so I, I feel very, you know, like indebted to them for that. And um, also I was Rameshwar's personal chef in uh, Los Angeles and served him in that capacity. Well, so yes, secret, that's my, my background. Secret, in, in my Bhakti secret network just told me that you're a wonderful prashadam cook, so. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah well, I don't know about that, good. but I know that, yeah. That's um, exciting. So, that's yeah. A, but oh, it is interesting that she can bring Prashadam to this only one prison that's near yeah, me. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, Do you yeah. happen to know whether prison, I, I don't know anything about the prison program, so she was talking to me about it the other day for some ideas. But do you think it's possible that any prisons in America would allow Zoom calls with, that, with the outside world? Or I, that think kind of she, I, think, I think she's working on that right now. Um, she's had a very difficult time um, lately because of the pandemic. And so, but she said that she's working on allowing that, uh, getting permission for that. That's interesting. So, yeah. The prison mm. uh, that she goes to is about an hour from me. So she commutes back and forth. It, um, <clears throat> it's in Oregon, but yeah. And that's beautiful um, association because she's, she's a pretty special person. Yeah, she is very special. Very sweet. And she's brought so many wonderful devotees here as well. So, um, but yeah, there, you know, um, I don't know what else to say. I mean, everyone has so many wonderful experiences with Guru Dave. And one thing I can always say is that whenever I was with him, um, I knew that he saw me in the room. He, he always scanned the room. Yeah. He knew who was there and who wasn't there. Yeah, and, when, and when you walked in late, he always saw that. And another thing that I always experienced with him was that he always observed me to see uh, how I would react to different situations. Like one time I was in this, when he was here and Brajanath got upset with me about something um, and he was lighting, lighting into me in front of Gurudev and I sat there quietly just like, you know, taking it and Gurudev was watching every moment to see if I would become angry or upset mm -hmm. or what. And I was just very patient and, and uh, quiet. And I knew that he was pleased by that. And mm -hmm. he always wanted us to show uh, these qualities of patience and understanding and empathy um, that that was Gurudev, you know, he had so much of that. And when he saw that in his disciples, he was very pleased with that. And Time and time again, um, he had always, um, I had this kind of exchange with him. Like at one point um, in Badger, I would, when I would go to see him, another thing I always prayed for when Gurudev would talk to us, he would always ask, oh, what group are you in? And he would tease us all. And I would tell him, I want to be in the small group, Gurudev, because there were so many people, you know, all the time. And more and more as the years went by, and I always wanted to just be in the small group. So on Parikram in India one year, I was crying my eyes out because I, I was overwhelmed with the loud noise, don't delay, don't delay, going from holy place to holy place, being rushed around like cattle. And I was just like, whoa, I need to be in the small group. This is too much for me. And so one night I cried, it was at Govardhan. I just cried and cried to Gurudev, please Gurudev, I, I want to be in the small group. So the next morning when the buses left, Puru came to me and said, oh, 
do you want to ride in our cab today? And I said, yeah, I would love to, because <laughs> that was like a small group. And so we followed Guru Dave and we went to uh, the birthplace of, of Lalita Devi and the buses went to the wrong place that day. Oh. And we had Guru Dave oh. all to ourselves. For, oh. I think it was about two hours. We had him completely to ourselves. There was about 10 or 12 of us there. And Guru Dave was like, where are they? Where are they? And then he would just have everybody speaking. And he, we had this very quiet afternoon under the shade of a tree with Guru Dave. And so he was always, um, he was always very kind to me and, and always giving me, you know, what I needed to feel, you know, um, I don't know, closer to him. And another yeah. time in Badger, when I saw him, he, he, he said to me, so how are you doing? And I looked at him and I never want to ever complain to him about anything. And I just looked at him and I said, oh, Guru David, it's very difficult. And he said, yes, it is very difficult. And just in that one sentence, I could feel the whole material energy and how he was like, yes, this is very difficult. But he was bringing us into our eternal um, relationship with him and, um, and Srimati Radharani. And I always felt that um, I was walking in his shadow, so to speak, that um, he changed um, the way that I live my life now. Um, his mercy is so um, amazing that anything can really be going on. And I feel Guru Dave always protecting me and close to me. And it's, uh, it's, it's really wonderful to have that. It's, the question of it's just a question of being willing to receive the mercy, right? Yeah, well, or yes. I mean, sometimes I think, oh, I'm so weak. I'm so insincere. But it's actually his mercy that I feel stronger because of that. And yeah. that I do feel that no matter, um, you know, we all have our challenges of life and life goes on. And, and I um, live my life now with Srila Gurudev by my side. And it's um, really beautiful. I, it, it's a happy life. I mean, for, you know, I feel him with me. And so um, he has brought so much joy. Um, you're never and alone purpose. if you've got Guru If you've got Guru yeah. protecting you, are never alone. Yes. Yeah. A lot of purpose. I feel a lot of purpose because yeah. in, even in my dealings with, you know, I do still do some preaching work and when I'm talking to people and sharing different things, um, I really do feel that uh, because of Gurudev, um, these people are experiencing um, some difference in their lives and yeah. um it's well they very, can feel they can feel through through you right that's what happens um they don't know yeah a little yeah they say things to me that always astonish me about you know their observations like one woman said to me once you walk in this world like a deer through the forest you don't leave a trace you don't harm anyone um and i was thinking about guru dave and how he was with people he mm -hmm. always was very much um, just giving and giving, um, you know, to anyone and treating everyone uh, very, I would say, um, equally, no matter who it was, everyone was treated equally. So, uh, um, uh, But it's interesting, he would treat everyone equally but differently at the same time. Yes. That was yes. the amazing thing. We all felt or we all feel, it's actually present tense, we all feel, it's like I feel like he doesn't love anyone any more than me, he loves me the most, and yet at the same time, I know how much he loves everybody else. It's kind of, it doesn't make any logical sense, but I feel totally secure in my relationship with him, and I know so many other people do too, And there's, but there's no, there's no envy in that, there's only relishing, like hearing your relationship with him helps me relish my relationship with him. Yeah, and he always, um, one thing that when I first met him, the thing that um, I appreciated the most was that everyone around him was just 
ecstatic. <laughs> you know, everybody had this beautiful smile. Everybody was walking on air. You know, you got that sense of, you know, his, he, he just had that way of bringing us all into uh, the spiritual yeah. world. And so that's what was another sweet thing about him. We must have bumped into each other because I was on that first American tour. I was also in Kartik in 96. Oh, uh, we were, yeah, yeah we I always stood at the back, but I don't think we ever did. But yeah, I no, know. I, kind of, um, I'm either at the front or I'm snoozing at the back of the temple, one of the two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, I'll let my daughter sing a song for you all. And, yeah, thank um, you. That was really, really special. Thank you so thank much. You. It's very you so sweet. Much.